do. We back again. We back again. Thank everybody for tuning in to the show. Uh, Dr. Crip, please like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Um, yeah, man, we back again. We can't be stopped. You know what time it is. We trying to say, trying to save the streets out here because when it's over, it's over. Ain't nothing left. You know what they gonna talk about after you gone and we got a lot of we got a lot of stuff happening out there man we we losing a lot of good homies man um but only thing you can hope is that you had your life stand for something after it was over with you know because once it's over it's over you know um i guess that's why i'm doing these shows kind of like because the people who i'm talking about today is uh they kind of like that they uh they they life is uh are over but it's you know the stuff that they uh they left behind you know um what they did when they was here you know all that good stuff like that so um i'm hoping that um you know if you're going through some of that stuff right now with somebody who not here no more you know carry on a legacy the best you could we just hope that they stood for something out here and not just die for anything especially not no uh neighborhood or <laughs> a gangster or hoover or uh, any of that you know i hope their life was a little bit more meaningful than that you know um but um yeah man it's a lot going on out here you know and um you know we just we're gonna talk about i you know yesterday when i came on yesterday i was supposed to be talking about my homie height <laughs> You feel me, Mr. Player, Mr. Switch Reels, you know, all that good stuff, you know. Uh, he, I, I wanted to show, I couldn't find it. I went to go look for it. Uh, I, I was looking for it in the, um, in the, um, on YouTube, but I, I couldn't really find it. You know what I'm saying? I was looking hard for it too. And I, I, I couldn't find it. I don't know where it was at, you know. Um I he was in a movie called How to Be a Player, right? And he had a little small scene, very very small scene, but back then, you know, <laughs> just to be on TV is something good, you know what I'm saying? Let you know you're trying to do something. But he was in the movie uh how to be a player so uh i um i was i was trying to pull that i was trying to pull that footage up but i couldn't really find it you know so now i'm gonna have to buy the dvd and do you know that's a trip when i went to go try to buy when i went to go try to find buy the dvd um it's not i went on the internet you know i was searching on the internet and everything and it's not on no platform uh, services. And, you know, that's a Russell Simmons movie. So I'm like, is they doing that behind Russell? That's a good question. Like, because I know they was on Russell like they, you know, they doing everybody else. Um, Diddy and Cosby and all them. But I was like, damn. I didn't know they I didn't know they was I guess I don't know if Russell fled. I don't know what's going on. You know, I don't know the situation with him or nothing. But I know that they took his that and that movie was made in 97. So that let you know. That kicked me up and I'm like, oh, that movie was made in 97. Okay. That's a trip. Um but that let you know, you know, I my my even though everything is a long time ago my accuracy you know i'm trying to make sure that i can understand <laughs> you know i might have to start taking some shark pills or something man get my memory straight you know uh, 
but yeah, I was I was trying to do I was trying to do um I wanted to do the the show on my homie Hike, man, who started the NC hat, you know. Uh the show I did, you can go check it out. It's about the how the NC became became fabric into South Central, you know. That was done by my homie Hike, who's rest in peace, harm Shakur uh harm 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 h-i-r-a-m i believe harm shakir but um he is the one who brought the nc to the hood you feel me so um i was trying to get his get i was trying to find that i was trying to find that um clip of that he was in the movie but every they got scenes of how to be a player on youtube you know some of the basic scenes or whatever bernie mac of course scenes like that um with aj you know some of the people in there but um he not all the scenes i was trying to pull up the the house party scene so when i was googling the when i would google the the house party scene it would you know house party the movie would come back so i'm like damn so i was i've been trying to find it all day man so i was like damn to finally i think i'm gonna just have to order the dvd so you know um I didn't I didn't order I didn't order the I didn't order the DVD yet, but I'm gonna order it because I was trying to find one cheap. You know, I'm like, I guess they're trying to you know how people would be trying to uh, what's that called price gouging or something? They trying to sell it for like I'm refusing to pay more than ten dollars for that DVD. I'm not gonna do it, you know. Um but I have been looking for the DVD all day, you know, or or looking for it on the internet. So I, I I was, you know, I was on my fire stick. I was on everything, looking for it, searching for it. The movie How to Be a Player with Bill Bellamy. And I'm like, it's removed. And then this is how I know it's a problem that they tripping on Russell or something is going on. Because that is definitely a Russell Simmons movie, Def Jam, all that. He behind that whole little get down. And um, um when I went to when I went to um when I went to um IMDB, I put it in I I put it in IMDB and the first thing that popped up was Paramount. So I'm like, okay, they trying to get you to, you know, get Paramount Plus and all that. But when I finally looked at the bold print, it says this movie is on no streaming platforms. And I was like, damn, this movie is a, it's a good movie. You know, it ain't a bad movie. And I, that movie you know, when it first came out, that's how I met. I met Russell Simmons. That dude is a cool dude. You know, he was cool. To, he was cool with me. You know, he was cool with Unity One. Um, you know, we was in the limousine with him to go see the movie, the premiere of the movie, and all that. You know, so Russell was he really cool? He, you know, he was a cool dude. You know, I I didn't see none of that. Whatever the situation he got. I never I never seen none of that. It didn't um it it never um it never um showed, you know. Um and it premiered at the uh, Magic Johnson Theater on Crenshaw and Stocker, you know. Crenshaw and King, I mean Crenshaw and King at the move at the Magic Johnson Theater. Uh why, I never understood when Magic got the movie theaters. He can't wear hats and all this in there. <laughs> I understand you want you want the element of a nice time out though, but uh, that was part of my story with hype because 
the night that some movie came out, we went to uh, Magic Johnson Theater. Uh, me, Tiny Dancer, and Mexican Money too. Uh, and it, we got in, <laughs> we got into it with the with the Blackstones up there, and it was a trip, man, <laughs> that unfolded. <laughs> We seen Hike. He, he was in a turtleneck sweater that night, so fight was out for him. He was not coming to help us. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't coming to help us or do nothing, man. And uh, I just remember, you know, seeing him that night and the whole and 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 the the whole night. It was an issue with me. You know, and Mexican money too, and uh, uh, he called some some G homies on him, and you know, I called him out like, "What? Well, you know, we can handle this over here." And you know, I never once brought <laughs> hike name up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I seen him there too. You know, what I'm saying with somebody else probably would have did in that situation, but. Uh, Tiny Dancer, Mexican Money, they knew he was there, too, because they knew that I seen him. You know, I told them that I seen him. And, uh, but they didn't see him, so they can't say how he reacted, what he was looking like or nothing. They they can't say, they can't say none of that because uh, they didn't, they didn't, um, they never seen him. They didn't, they didn't see him, so they don't know what he was doing. I was the only one that seen him. I forget how it go. You know, somehow I made it to the front, you know, but I end up, I end up seeing him inside the movie theater. He was on a date. You feel me? Turning up, turning turtleneck sweater with Tim's on. <laughs> so He gave me that look like, this is nothing. You know I'm not <laughs> with you. And that I ain't scared of nothing, but I'm not coming out there to deal with none of that. <laughs> and you can say, oh, that's some buster shit. You can say that's some buster uh, stuff. You can say anything you want, but. Gang members is like that, man. And, you know, they'll justify that. You know, even if we did get shot or hurt or whatever, he'll just be like, oh, I was in the movie theater when all that. I didn't even know that was the homies out there. I didn't see nobody because that's what he going to say. You feel me? And even if I say I seen him, he's still going to say, oh, on oh, 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 my grind, you know, that's his brother, rest in peace. He's going to say, oh, my I didn't see you. I never seen you at all. He gonna he gonna look you right. In the, he gonna look you right in the eyes and say, "I never seen you." What are you talking about? Did you talk to me or something? You know, uh, he gonna call that female on the phone. Like, did you see me talk to anybody or whatever? He gonna go and. I, you know, I seen him too. We got, you know, it was a trip, man. That was just a whole trip night, you know. And then when we get back to Western, you know, I want to tell the story. I'm beating around the bush. I want to tell the story, but I want to show his footage. So I'm not going to tell the story till I get the DVD. So uh, I, I don't know who it is that. One of the fans, they was like, tell a story about Hype, you know, uh, you seem to like him or whatever, you know. Um, but yeah, that that that's the story of Hype. I got a movie story at the Magic Johnson Theater <laughs> when we ran, and it was just me, Tiny Dancer, and uh, Mexican Money too. Um, it was just three of us, and the Blackstones was like 25 deep, you know what I'm saying? But they was kind of younger than us, you know? They had some 
a few older people in our bracket because like I said, like this is in the nineties. I don't I had to be I think I was in my twenties, I'm not sure. Um in my mid, maybe mid, late twenties or something like that. But um hike, you know, he was just a trip that whole time. I, <laughs> he was a trip. He is a trip, you know. Um but that's but what it did, but thinking about hike and all that stuff like that. And, you know, I was like, damn, because at that time, the the nine O's, I, 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 I've always been looking for somebody uh, famous to to latch on to for, you know, bringing resources to the hood or whatever, you know, they could do or whatever. Now, we got some people that grew up in the 90s that um, – Never um they they before uh they before they they before they before me you know um so I don't know um the connection really with them and I believe Karen White is one Karen what's her name yeah, Karen White, the lady that sing, I'm not your superwoman, you know. Um, um, I'm not your superwoman. I think that's one of her songs. She got a few songs, but I believe she grew up in the '90s. Um. Now, I, I was told that James Lofton, I believe he was a wide receiver. I believe he, James Lofton was a wide receiver at one point for the Green Bay Packers. I'm not sure. I got to get that correct. And I, I, I believe that he lived on, 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 on Hoss. You know, um, so, um, I got a phone call, but I don't know it. I don't have no special guests. What's going on? Yeah. All right. All right. That was one of my partners. I had to take the call. He said he got some good news. Um, so let's just hope that it's really, really good news. <laughs> but I heard James Lofton lived over there. So it, it made me think, thinking about my homie Hike and him being in the movie um, How to Be a Player. Because now we probably had we probably had uh, some other people that had roles in movies, maybe small parts or something here and there. Uh, that's on my on my on my uh, on my level, you know, in my era, you know, in my in my age bracket. But it ain't too many. I know I don't have no sports. I don't have no sports people. Now, Russell Westbrook is under me, like two generations under me, you know, uh, or a whole full uh, full generation under me. When I mean that, I want to say, uh, no, nah, he two generations under me. He two. That's two generations down, you know, maybe two and a half or something like that. So I don't um, – I don't know him like that, but he know other people, my younger homies. So it's been around me, people that kind of, you know, try to make it here and there. It's, but it's very, it's very, very few. Uh, it is, it is, it's very small that now behind the scenes is, is all kind of stuff going on. 
myself and other people might be at videos, movies, and all that, but we not in nothing. We not, we not, we don't have no contribution in nothing. We don't got no rappers. We ain't, you know, I don't have no rappers from my bracket that's in, you know, from directly from 9 0, you know, that made it, that's successful, that's really out there, you know. Uh, we got a couple now, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's out there, you know, a few homies. Um, but they not at no superior level to where they fame is around the world. You know, they building their empires. But um, so it made me think like, well, who, I mean, how many famous people was it ever from? No, no. Uh, did I ever get it? Did I ever stand a chance of <laughs> knowing somebody that I could say, hey, this about, you know what I'm saying? So it made me think. And I was like, well, you know, I did have somebody, you know, in the home. He was a homie, you know, for a minute, you know, uh, and uh, it it didn't last long. Not, I don't know. The incident may have had something to that that make it last long because a lot of people don't, you know, recover from a fight. You know, they let the fight get the best of them and, you know, they, you know, you know, move on. But some people push on through that because you ain't gonna win every fight. But that's to let you know how God uh works. Now he, he had another plan for this dude, but you know, I ain't gonna let you you you're not gonna die on Western or nothing like that. You know, you're gonna touch a lot of people and you're gonna experience different things. Uh you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna experience different things in life. So uh that that dude uh was the guy uh um dookie that played uh one of uh, ice cube friends in the movie boys in the hood the guy with the pacifier um uh, he is um this guy right here Dookie with the pacifier in his mouth. So you might know him. His name is Dietrich. I remember his name, Dedrick. His name is Dedrick. I remember calling him Dedrick. I cannot think. I want to say, I want to say, now I could be wrong, but I believe he was calling himself D Dog. That's what I believe he was calling himself, D Dog. And I'm saying that because back then you had to get your name from somebody. Um, you had to get your name from somebody that could, and we were young back then because uh, he in my bracket. Uh, so he couldn't name himself. You know what I'm saying? He was going, um, he had to, uh, he had to, he had to, get a name from, um, you know, somebody else, but you could come, you can name yourself, you know, you just, you know, going to have to, you know, make sure that everybody respect your name or, or whatever the case. But yeah, this guy right here, Dedrick, man, you know, he used to be from nine. Oh, I used to hang with this dude. I used to run with this dude. He was a certified nine. Oh, gang member. Yes. He was from the hood. He was from the hood. He used to hang out with us. He used to smoke weed with us. Uh, now, they lived on the, like, he lived on the 91st side, something like that. Um, uh, I think on the Hobart side, 91st, something like that, in that area, that general area down there. Um, but, this dude is from 9-0. He used to be from 9-0, homie. And he used to literally, I just, this dude used to be walking down Western with 9 on his shirt. I'm talking during the times of when we was doing the, when when you see them numbers of how people be wearing them numbers, they, they hood on their shirts. I mean, when this is everyday fashion. See, now people only do that. See, now... 
people, 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 people only do that stuff. People only do that stuff. People only do that stuff. Um, people only do that stuff on what they call uh, they hood days. You feel me? They only do that. They only do that on a what they call they hood days. They don't do it on a daily basis like that no more. You know what I'm saying? When I grew up, we was doing it every day. That was the way we came out. Cucky, khakis, chugs, you know what I'm saying? Hood on your shirt, 90 jersey, any of that type of stuff. Not no 90 jersey that the cursey jersey, none of that. I'm talking in the 80s where you had to put 90 on your shirt, you know. That's when we would come out like that every day, you know. That wasn't no no just for the hood day. Now that's all you see. That's people only do that now on a hood day. They, you know, wear all that stuff on a hood day on a khaki shirts and all that. But they don't come out dressed like that. Fashion has took over skinny jeans, all that other stuff. You already know the story. Nobody don't dress like that, you know, uh, uh, like that. But um, in the 80s, that's how we used to come out every day. And dude was a part of that. He was a part of that. He was a full-fledged part of that. And, um, you know, we we – Everybody going to have their ups and their downs and all that from their homies in their hood and all that. Um, and he he had his, you know, he had his share of problems, you know. Um, he, not that he was scared. I don't never believe that he was scared. I just believe the situation that he that he was in that changed, altered his decision of messing with the hood, you know? Um, so he he had a problem with another goon. <laughs> he had a problem with another goon, and it was over a girl. And <laughs> the other goon won, you know? <laughs> and that changed him and maybe like a week or so a month or so you just start going down the line you know he could be the first d mac you know no he might that that's who he might be d mac that might have been his name not d dog d mac he might be the first d mac from 90 that's who he is i believe the first d mac from 90 and um he uh he had an issue with another homie <laughs> and you know it was over a girl and to this day you know the homie you know he got about three beautiful daughters with with that girl <laughs> and i you know i don't think it was a big battle you know i think that uh uh, Dietrich, you know, was kind of like, because that guy is, you know, is fight ready proof, that homie. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to get it if you want it, you know. So it probably was a little bit more than he could handle. And it eventually, it kind of got him away, you know. But. That homie, man, you know, is a you know he's a good homie. I mean, he ain't know that this dude's gonna be in the movies. Like that. It was it was over that girl. It was over that girl, which eventually became his, you know, his baby mama and all that. So, uh, uh, you know, I it's nothing that you can say or do about that. So, um, but. You know, I we I we did used to hear about him, you know, that he was doing stuff, you know, periodically the people that knew him, you know, um, 
like, hey, you heard such and such? Like, he talked to some, you know, so and so say he doing this and that. Like, I think he wanted to be a rapper too. He was trying to rap. You know, I believe he we heard he was trying to rap. And I was gonna support him, you know, but I don't think nothing ever happened with his career, you know. I don't know if he got music or what. I don't, you know, I don't know none of that. But I do know that um he used to um he used to be from the hood. That's the only thing I could tell you, you know, <laughs> that he used to be from the hood and it was all good. He was he was one of he was one of my folks, you feel me? <laughs> I used to hang out with him, you know. Uh and it was it he was from the hood, and it's during that time when you finding out homies who live in the hood, you know, like you didn't know everybody. Like I didn't know he lived in the hood. He lived on a different side of the hood for me, but it's still our hood, you know. It was it was it's still our hood. So um I didn't, I didn't, I never knew that, you know? So, but once I find that out, you know, we like, oh, okay, it's all good. But yeah, he used to be from the hood. You know, I believe his name was D Mac. Uh, and uh, he, um, you know, he got into that situation with another homie over a female and, uh, you know, that situation, you know, led him away, which was better things. It's good that he, you know, that maybe that that happened. He got a chance to experience all this. So, you know, stuff that happened that's negative ain't always a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? God be bringing, you know, different stuff into your life. But, I, you know, maybe he still had that, um, that, that particular attitude you know, still, who knows, you know, maybe he could try to be versatile, you know, um, you know, and he shifted it to acting, you know, and uh, uh, it got him roles like this, you know, uh, because I believe if he would have got a chance to act in life that he probably would have been a good actor, man. And I would have had somebody that I could have, you know, reached out to eventually, hopefully, and got accepted. Like, hey, man, what's up, homie? You know, <laughs> like, man, you know, turn just turn me on. I don't need no handout. All I ever need is to help you, you know, turn me on because I'm going to make it happen, man. You know, all you got to do is just, uh, you know, turn turn it on, homie. Give me, you know, a little turn on and it's, it's all good, brother. And uh, I, I wish I, that I could have had that, you know, that chance to to really get to uh, to 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 incur, you know, to build that relationship. Now, this is the thing: when he did the movie Boys in the Hood, right? When they did the Crenshaw scene, we was out there. The homies was out there. We was out there deep. You feel me? A lot of my homies out there. We supplied some of the low riders. Some of my homies who in the low rider game, they had they sold low riders. I think Kid Frost, the rapper, might have bought a low rider from the homie that night. Um, but uh, we 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 was out there deep, you know. So um, we got a chance to talk to him now. It was only like when we was out there, it was only like about three, me and like two other homies who knew who he was. Like, that's such and such. So we was talking to him, you know, and, you know, he was like, you know, what's happening? You know, oh, yeah, what's going on? You know, he wasn't tripping, you know. He was just like, yeah, man, you know, I'm trying to, do my thing and, and 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 you know i got i got thrown into this you know and uh he i'm like man you know we we trying to hang out or whatever you know boom and he you know he was just like you know yeah man you know i'm gonna try to you know see what's up i'm gonna try to stay in con he was gonna stay in contact with another homie that um he used 
I, I think that's the homie that he used to be talking to. You know, if he do call somebody from the hood, that, that homie that was there that night, that's who he was talking to. So he was like, man, you know, he's going to stay in contact with the hood, you know? So he's like, yeah, for sure, man, that's all good. You all good. You know, we need somebody like you. We in desperate need of anybody that could throw us a life support bone, you know? So, uh, you know, it would have been a good thing. So, you know, when we was talking to him, you know, I, I was like, uh, I was like, man, listen. Now, look, here, here I go right here. See, if you could see. Let me take it back a little bit. I'm going to show you where I come in the screen to play at. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but some of these cars that's parked belong to the homies. And uh, now see, there I go, right there. That's me right there. You see that guy right there? If you can see that screen, now if you look at Morris Chestnut, you see him, that dude in the background? Yeah, that's your boy back there. Yeah, that's your boy. <laughs> you, you feel me? If you look at that screen, that's your boy back there. You know? They like, you know, get in the movie, you know, get, you know, walk in the movie, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what he did. He like, man, y'all can walk in the movie if you want, get in the background. You know, so he set that up for he helped set that up for us. You know, he was he, he was dealing with, you know, the homies that night like that. So, you know, I believe if 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 he wouldn't have got killed at some point that we would have had a better relationship, you know. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's your boy right there in the background right there. I got on the king's coat. Right. I stole the king's coat from um my 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 sister used to work as a security guard back in the day across the street at uh where the forum was at now across the street from the forum was some of the business was the 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 place it was a it was a building there see people don't know this this on the corner of manchester and perry back in the day if you show that corner now it was a building there and it, had, it was a corporate corporate small building you know it had a lot of bit a lot of uh offices there some of those offices was connected to uh the lakers the kings and all the other stuff well, my sister was a security guard there, and her shift was a late night shift, middle of the night. So I would come up there, mess with her or whatever. And of course, you know, I'm your younger brother. So, you know, I'm already gang banging, I'm out of control. So you already know I'm 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 man, I'm rumbling through all these rooms and all that. And I stumble across some kind of king's office. And these coats was in there like brand new you know in a box like five or six of them brand new in a box so you know i took like two boxes i was selling them and everything i was selling them coats they was trench coats too uh i guess because you wear them when you're in hockey it's cold I, I guess you they they was uh meant for something like that but i took like two boxes and i was selling them coats man for like a hundred some dollars a piece because the tags on them was like three hundred dollars, so I was like one fifty. <laughs> so I used to have that coat on, man, everywhere. It was the trench coat, like the mafia, you know, <laughs> mob, <Mama>, like yeah. <laughs> so um, it was cool. So that coat man was 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 big in LA it did a lot it hit the gauge and all that <laughs> uh but that's me right there walking so you can see me walking in the background that's me that's your boy 
Now, keep your eye on the screen, man. You know, now, it's a hater in here somewhere. I don't know where the hater, you can't see him, but he keep telling me to walk. See, there I go in the back right there. That's me in the back. You see that smile, that big, big giant smile. So I'm walking. The, the hater is like, hey, man, keep walking, keep walking. <laughs> and it made me leave the screen. I was trying to get to these dudes up here so I could stay in the screen. You know what I'm saying? So give me some screen time. But um, we was all out there. My homies was all, we was all out there. Now, this movie, now look. This is some of my homies right here. You feel me? Um, now, he didn't want to play it, but he was fresh out the pen, so he, he, he didn't have no choice but to do it. Uh, my homie, he going to come, he going to pop up in the background. That, that go my homie right there. Ho, ho, is that him? Wait a minute. I passed it up. I passed it up. Now, he was fresh out of jail that night, right? So, I think that's him back there with the curl back there. That's my homie, Drake Pope. He didn't really want to play the blood. He was like, man, I don't want to be on screen like that. But they like, Drake Pope, we set it up for you. <laughs> the homies who was out there doing all the business, they was like, man, we set it up for you to be in the movie. Man, they going to pay you, you know. Uh, they like your look, man. They, they going to pay you to be in the movie. You know what I'm saying? You need that money. <laughs> but he didn't want it. He didn't want to be a blood on, 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 on the thing, you know. He didn't want to be a blood, so I was like, man, you better get that money. Uh, and he he did it. Yeah, that's him back there. To the left of the the to the to the guy with the red hat, the shooter guy in the movie. That's the that's the guy who shot um, Trey in the movie. That's my homie, Dre Pope, to the left. <laughs> and he didn't want he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to he didn't want to do it because he basically was like, "Man, I ain't playing no blood. I ain't no damn blood." <laughs> and he was just fresh out. He just got out of jail, like. I, I really want to say that day, that day, he had just got out of jail. And, you know, he came straight to the hood, you know, trying to get back on, get on his feet. You know, um, you know, we looking out for him, whatever. But uh, when we got the call to everybody go to homie, like, hey, let's pack up. We finna go on Crenshaw, get everybody. You know what I'm saying? And they took about three or four low riders out there. And we went out there to uh to this movie out here, Boys in the Hood. And um, after they did all the negotiations and stuff like that, they was like, uh, Drake Pope, we got a role for you, be in the movie. He like, they want you to play a gang member. So he thought he was gonna play a crip on on Cube side. And they was like, No, nah, you gotta be a he was like, no, nah. hell, they was like, nah, they're gonna pay you, Drake Pope. We already set it up where they're gonna pay you. I think they gave him like three, like three, four, three, four hundred dollars that night. They gave him something like that. Because he had that look, you know what I'm saying? Tall, dark skin. He was on swole with a curl. You know what I'm saying? So they wanted that, they wanted that look on camera. So they gave him, so they they gave him a few hundred dollars, but he didn't want to do it, but he couldn't turn down that money because he needed it. <laughs> so, you know, certain things you'll do for that money, man. And uh uh he uh eventually, yeah, that's him right there. That's him walking with the <laughs> and then look, this dude here. Oh my god, this dude here, right here. This dude right here, wait a minute, hold on. 
This became his worst nightmare, this movie. Him, right here. Keep your eyes on this dude. That's the homie right there with the S hat on, too. He from he, he a real sick soul. Uh, um, this dude. <laughs> He from the hood too, right? <laughs> Them is real clothes. <laughs> hey, look. Let me tell you something. Sometimes in life, when people do stuff, and uh, you know they achieve certain stuff, you know. When you get when you when you get a uh you know how you say it what is it your fifteen minutes of fame you know some people can take it overboard <laughs> and that's what that's what that's what my boy did he took it way overboard <laughs> that's him right there you see him in the front you know right next to the S hat. You know what I'm saying? He took it overboard, you know? Uh, and uh, I mean, basically, he took that bro <laughs> and he ran, he ran completely with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he ran, he ran completely with it. All, all the way as far as he can take it. <laughs> Look, you, now, peep the attitude. Now, he really acting right now, right? <laughs> he really he really acting right now. He, he, in full, he in full character mode right now, right? Look, check him out. <laughs> he in full character mode. He in full, look, look, look. <laughs> Y'all think so won't know. <laughs> look, look. Y'all niggas don't want none. Y'all niggas don't want none. Be in full character mode. So uh so he he used to so he used to uh what he would do, right? After that movie, after that movie, we be standing on Western, right? <laughs> we'll be we, we we all standing on Western. So, you know, we'll be on Western homies just hanging out, gambling, doing all kind of stuff. So now he will probably be standing in the gates. So, so, you know, he'll probably be one of the only people standing in the gate. It, you got a whole bunch of crowd behind you, though. So at this point, he like the only one standing at the gate. You know what I'm saying? And then... <laughs> You know, he doing that, that look like, like, you know, <laughs> that's his, his boys in the hood, right? He doing his boys in the hood. So he be out there just posted doing that. But what he'll do, every blue moon, he'll move like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like something is happening and he not really knowing people really watch it because we watching the front to make sure he don't get shot or we don't see nobody walking up shooting. So people is always constantly watching the front, no matter if we standing in the, the aisleway. So when he'll make a gesture and a move like somebody is coming or something, it will startle the whole crowd. People will be running and like, who, what's going on? Who? And they come out and be like, it ain't nothing. Like, you know, this nigga just walk with them extra just walking. Right. So, he did that maybe once or twice, right? The third time, the homies got home. They was like, you let that boys in the hood go to your head, homie. The next time you do that, we gonna, we gonna beat your ass. <laughs> and he cut, he stopped doing it. But he used to be doing that all the time, man. Oh my God, that was so funny. That was hilarious. I was like, this dude is crazy. Um, but yeah, he, he was, he, he was doing that. And, uh, 
it would trigger a whole lot of homies to uh, start running and moving and all kind of stuff like that. But uh, as you see this scene right here, see now that the 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 trivia question that I gave on a previous show, like you know, how many times I think like what happened during this scene or something like this. See, um, before this shot, before they shot this scene, there was an altercation. My cousin from Raymond, Slim from 120, he had uh, the 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 bloods came up there, you know, and uh, he had got he had got into it one of them, and he kind of knocked him out, and you know they carried the blood dude back to his car, and when they pulled off, they was like, "We'll be back." And, uh, you know, the crowd would just naturally assume that, you know, that they was coming back. So everybody was on point waiting for them dudes to come back. So John Singleton secretly gave the order to shoot that scene right there because they had heard the drama and some of the people seen the drama that was taking place right there in that little area of Crenshaw. So John Singleton was smart. As a director, he was like, go now, shoot that scene. And as soon as they shot that scene and that guy, it was a white man who actually was shooting that that gun in the air, you know. And um, um, uh, they when they shot it again so the guy can hold the gun, you know, um, everybody was on point. So he... That that's a one take. That is a one take shot of that video of uh of everybody on Crenshaw of everybody on Crenshaw running. This is re this is real. This is not this is this this what made that scene authentic when he when they did this when they did this uh scene right here. Everybody out there thought this is real. No way did they think that that was boom. That all that is all real fear, scared. They think it's the bloods coming back. Uh, was that me running at the end right there? That was that trench, that coat on. That might have been me. Who knows? It looked like me. That was a king's coat. If that was a king's coat, that was me. Um, but um, you know, that was real, man. That was that was some real that was some real stuff right there. But yeah, um, my guy, man, he is uh he is uh um a real, a real nine zero man. Um, this guy right here, Dedrick. He was really from the hood, man. You know, and um, it made me think about him. Like I said today, because I was supposed to do the story about my homie Height. Rest in peace, the. The founder of the NC hat, but I he he hike was in the movie uh how to be a player, but I couldn't find his the movie how to be a player because I wanted to show um I wanted to show um uh, hike his uh audition but um I I couldn't find it so um I had to uh, come up. I so I said, let me. It, it got me to thinking about other people, but it made me think about Dietrich, and it made me think about how God put you in certain places to do certain things. That you know, had that he had that fight with the homie, he probably wouldn't have left the hood, and he probably you know wouldn't have came to be able to to be in these all these movies that he was in, you know, Poetic Justice, uh, Boys in the Hood and Higher Learning. So obviously John Singleton liked it him. And 
like, hey, man, you know, I'm going to keep you working in my movies, you know. So that's a blessing right there, man. And that's a blessing that only we hope that we can get. You feel me? Um, so, um, you know, it lets you know to stay focused, man, you know, to keep your head up, not to let one incident, you know, stop you. But um, for the gang member, it's to let you know that, hey, you know, you're going to go through stuff like that. So if you can't handle that type of stuff, man, you know, you, you probably don't need the gang bang because you're going to fight over some women in your in your life behind girls. And, and unfortunately, sometimes you're going to get people going to get killed and you may be one of the ones that going to get killed behind a girl that's in a gang. One move away. Hey, Dr. Cripp, why do a lot of gangs kill their own now? Love your show. Nothing like it on SM. 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 Oh, social media. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. One move away. I appreciate that. Um. Why do man? Why do? Yeah, you know why gangs killing themselves? Because there is no such thing as loyalty. There is no such thing as big homie. There is no such thing as little homie. There is no such thing as uh, 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 for life and all this other stuff. That's why gangs are killing themselves. That's why. Um, where you where you if you look at social media, it, it tells you. You feel me? A whole lot of gangs. You feel me? That's killing themselves. Let me tell you something. What the difference is between um, even the era of 15 years ago, which I consider still the same era, 10, 10 12, 13 years ago. That's still the decade is still one era. 10 years is still one. So that's 2014. So let me tell you about 2014. Even in 2014, the difference from 2014 to 2004 and back, the difference is this. When somebody in my era in the 90s and the 80s and the 90s and a little bit of the 2000s, when they got killed, guess what? They put it on the wall. Ha, 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 ha. Rest in piss and, you know, uh, whatever they going to say, you know, negative about the person who they just killed. Because the killers is letting you know we did that. That hood is letting you know, yeah, we did that. They sitting around with, watching the yellow tape. First thing they do is going to the house looking at the news. Oh, yeah, it was a shooting over there. They sent some girls down there. Go see to find out if you can listen to see who died. And then like, oh, yeah, it was little man, uh, little bad, bad and them died, man. That, they killed little bad, bad. They killed somebody named little bad, bad. So now the A-Trades can go right. The Hoovers, the families, or whoever it is that's killing the 9 0 can go right. Little bad, bad, uh, F you and ha, ha, ha. They write that on the wall. That's how you know who did it. That's how we find out who did it, because we know they're going to write on the wall. Now, check this out. When Lil Bad Bag get killed in 2014, guess what? The Hoovers and the families and them don't go right on the wall. You know why? Because it's internal. That's why. Now you see... Rest in peace, little bad bad. Well, how they know little bad bad is dead? They homies. Why is they homies putting up rest in peace, little bad bad? That's because one of them just did it. And the whole hood know that's little bad bad on 91st with his brains blew out because one of his homies did it. That's how. See, that's how you know present day when somebody killed somebody because now they took it to this. 
when um the um um when the um um the gang kill somebody they ha ha they on social media now ha 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 that's how you find out who did it because now the gang is saying ha 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 on social media you feel me but now it's no ha 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 from another gang but the gang is putting up on facebook instagram rest in peace little baba you feel me well who killed little baba who you think killed little baba why you think they putting it why his homegirls and all them oh little baba i miss you i love you uh boo boo -boo. why you think it's happening so much like that because there's no such thing as loyalty and all that you can get into it when them dudes shot me when them little when when that when them when that dude shot me they he was trying to make it seem like the Inglewood families the A-Trays or the Hoovers came through and did it and the whole time is you and riding with these dudes now I can't say all them was part of it because I don't know that but you the one who shot me so you didn't want to face me like a man because I would have beat your ass. You know, you wasn't going to win that battle. So I guess you're trying to prove to everybody that you are, that if somebody got your name in their mouth, you feel me, this is what you're going to do. So that's a threat to everybody else supposed to be looking at that. I'm not worried about that no more. God didn't remove me from that. He like, man, I'm not going to let you go because not only if I'm going to kill you, I've got to kill everybody that was out there that night. Everybody got to go. That's how that's going to happen. And I'm not going to do all that. But don't let me catch you. <laughs> don't let me. You feel me? Don't, don't do that, you know. Um, but that's the way it is. And it's been like that. People like that dude that shot me is in every hood. You got some weirdo like that in every hood. Ain't been from that neighborhood 10 years. Didn't grow up in that neighborhood. Came from somewhere else. Was getting help from homies, all that. Went to the county, got out, got a chip on your shoulder. Now nobody can tell you nothing. So when somebody speak your name or say something about your name, you going to shoot them and kill them. You ain't finna fight. You ain't finna do none of that. That's the same reason why we didn't hear about your name in the county jail or none of that. You was under the homie son protection. You know, not saying that you were scared to fight, you was a buster or none of that, but your name was not ringing. So we already know what that is. When you go to the county, you're a young dude, you're supposed to hear your name ringing. Let me tell you something. I can't think of that youngster name. Oh, the homie, Robbie O. He changed his name to something else. Let me tell you, it never changes in the county jail, the status. It never changes. You're a young dude. You're going to fight constantly. Guess what? We used to hear about this dude getting his ass kicked everywhere he go in the county jail. But you know what them enemies used to say? He ain't giving up. He stays squabbling. I can tell you that he got, yeah, he getting, he losing all his fights, but he, he ain't stopping. He squat and he got known for that before he got known for actually start seeing because he going to develop his squabble. Now he's going to be a good fighter because of that in the jail, but he was taking so many L's. He became known for that. Not, Oh, he a buster. Woo woo. No, like, Oh yeah. I heard, yeah, I heard you got out with my homie. He sent you. Ooh, yeah, I don't care. Ooh, he was going back and back, squabbling with dudes. You know, the people he losing against. I would run it back, run it back. Most people ain't going to do that. So the dude that shot me, what I'm saying, we never even heard you in the county jail like that. Never heard your name popping like that. But you out shooting G's like me. That's why Inglewood Legend, what's up? What's up, Crip? That's why you see, that's why you see stuff. That's why you hear and see stuff like this 
um happening uh a lot of gangs killing their own homies that's why because there's no such thing as loyalty there's no such thing as big homie there's no such thing as little homie there's no such thing as loyalty that don't exist that's fabrication anybody that tell you that are lying because guess what why y'all didn't kill him that snitch well why y'all didn't kill him that ran out on the homie well why y'all didn't kill him after the homie got killed he starts sleeping with this dude girl and going up in the house and doing all kind of stuff but why y'all didn't do nothing to him why y'all didn't why y'all let this dude uh uh come back around because he got money uh you, you feel me so that there is no there is no um um there's no such thing as um loyalty and 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 organization and all that in a gang anything can happen in a gang at any given time and it can ruin your life that's why you should die before you let your child son or daughter call themselves a crip or a blood there's too many other avenues in the world that they can take besides taking the road of a crip or blood that's outrageous homie that's 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 yeah turned all the way down in jail then get out and be turned all the way up that's who shot me that's why i'm telling you that's why i'm telling you Inglewood legends that's that's what i'm telling you to do that shot me now you can look at it you can look at my book you could do whatever you want and i could care less right now this is what i'm telling you this is what i say now you could you could call it what you want this this is what i said i said this is a picture of this is a picture this is a picture of uh this is a picture of the conspirators in the shooter i didn't say oh he's short he tall he light he brown he none of that i didn't say none of that i just said these are the conspirators and the shooters on this picture this is the but this is the part of the busters of the uh, of the people that shot me now i didn't say all of them shot me i said conspirators i didn't say how much of a conspirator they play what role or none of that that's all i said that's what i said i didn't say who what where or none of that i didn't say no names i didn't say none of that so you know, nine O's could be mad all they want, but I'm telling you, the dude that shot me is part of that. You was you. I'm not saying you was a buster in the county jail. I'm not saying you didn't fight in the county jail. What I'm saying is that when you went in, you was 18. You were supposed to be squabbling. We were supposed to be hearing your name constantly. We were not hearing that. We did not hear that. Your name was not ringing like that. You know who name we heard? The homie's son name was ringing. That's who name was ringing. And you was with him. And we didn't hear your name ringing like that. The homie's son was ringing. But all of a sudden, you get out the county jail, you turned up. When you went in, you wasn't nobody like that. You wasn't no shooter. You wasn't no killer. You wasn't doing all that. But now you come out on the county jail, you got this chip on your shoulder. All of a sudden, somebody mentioned your name. You shooting them. You shooting me. Your words to me was, hey, what's up, big homie? I got some fire weed. You want to buy some? That tells you, I don't know I have a problem with you. I don't have a problem with you. You shoot me because I, I spoke on your name because you rob old people. That's why <laughs> it was getting out of hand. You robbing old people, you know, you, you doing all kind of foul stuff in the hood. You know, you, uh, you, you trying to be this, uh, gun hole slinger dude. That's, that's what this is. So that message is to the rest of the hood. That's over there. If this dude did this to me, guess where you think his mind at? So basically, he run the hood now. That's how that go. All decisions got to come to him because if he don't like it, you say something about his name or whatever, guess what he's doing? He's shooting you. He's killing you. And he's trying to do it on the under. That's what that is. 
Now, you know who with me? D1 Smoke 9-0. Good looking. Now, you know who riding with me? G-O-D. Because <laughs> he got weirdos like you. You can't kill me. <laughs> you think you can kill me? <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. God didn't want me to die over there in that park. That's who didn't want me to die over there. Didn't have nothing to do with you. Oh, I, you can't shoot. You can't You can't do this. You can't do that. So that means if you can kill me, that means every single gang war that y'all go through, you supposed to be on the front line in the front. You can't make up no excuses. You can't do nothing. When something happened, you got to be the first one out there. If you can shoot a G, then that means you can go shoot <laughs> all these other people. But see, it backfired. It backfired because I'm not built like that. Whoever told you or whatever you thought is not built like that. Because when you came out the backpack and you started shooting, guess what I did? I didn't run away. I ran toward. Because <laughs> I'm built like that. That's how I'm built. You think that I'm scared? I'm stupid. <laughs> I didn't stop them bullets. God stopped them bullets. I'm a damn dummy. I'm trying to get to you to take the gun from you. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what made you have to shoot me six times, which it don't even look like I got shot. I'm still pretty. My smile is still good. I'm still functioning. I still, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I look good. I'm straight. My health is good. Everything is flowing. I'm moving up in the world. <laughs> so nothing didn't happen. Nothing didn't happen. And if you think that I'm going to throw my life away in my mid-50s to kill you and a bunch of other ones, then I don't know what to say. I thought about it a lot. But God said, no, I got a better plan. Go write two books <laughs> and live your life. I got two books and three on the way. You feel me? Another one on the way. You know? This is what God said. Go write two books, man. That's what you go do. Go write two books. Go be the author of two books, homie. And sit down and go leave my message. Because when I get somebody like you on here to tell the world to, you know, uh, what it is, that's what it is. You know, I'm because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not finna hold no punches with nobody. I'm finna give it to you raw. You feel me? So I can care less what somebody say about me because a snitch, what are you talking about? I didn't say no names in there. I just said, here go a picture. These are the conspirators and this is the shooter. That's for you to decide. I ain't found no police reports. Ain't nothing, no police report. Police is mad at me because I wouldn't even cooperate. I didn't get victims of crime or none of that. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I got a whole nother plan. You better be able to reinvent yourself after a tragedy. That's what God did. I, that's all I'm on, you know? So I'm far from that. I'm, I'm, I'm far from that. So now the, 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 the next, the, 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 the next, OG homie or whoever better be look out worried or whatever because don't nobody don't know ain't nobody in their 50s over there running that neighborhood ain't nobody <laughs> you know what I'm saying that neighborhood is being led by nobody uh over 35 which is sad <laughs> you know everybody over there making decisions for that hood is under 35 bro and that ain't the way <laughs> And it ain't supposed to be like that, you know. Trust me, you know, that's real business. But yeah, um, 
Inglewood, that's what that's how it is. You feel me? That dude was the dude that shot me, he wasn't making no noise like that in the county jail. Look, I even gave this dude a ride home when he first got put on. I gave him a ride home before, you know, he come from out the Hoovers, you know. Um, but um it's soft as pudding. Go to jail for whatever reason and get out. You got this major chip on your shoulder, you know, because you probably was getting clowned in there. You know, you weren't getting no money like that. You know, you probably was in there starving and thought the next time I go to jail, I ain't going to be stuck. You know, <laughs> you know, I think it's going to jail be like, man, I ain't coming back like this no more. Uh, next time I come back, I'm going to be having money on my books. <laughs> It probably was a a a, a a a a a thing like that, you know. Uh, but you know the the destruction of gangs is 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 it's going to eat itself up. It's the evolution is not. It's always going to be. Uh, um, Hound Hound House Radio ninety four Radio, salute salute. It's always going to eat itself up, homie. It ain't going to never be right. You feel me? It ain't going to never be right. It, it It's always going to lead to that. One move away. It's always going to lead that to that. Uh, one move away said, hey, Dr. Crip, why do a lot of gangs kill their own now? Because that is the reason, the evolution of gangs. It it listen, nothing that starts off negative. Crips, where bloods started off negative. There's nothing positive about them. It's all negative. That means that it will never stand. It may last negatively through the test of times we keep getting people put on and on and on but look all the lot man just think just think if we if we had all the good homies that lost a life behind gang violence girls uh jealousy ego all that and they were here right now I know a bunch of people that I need to say, listen, come get this dude <laughs> and uh, bring him back. And <laughs> I got, I got a bunch of them. <laughs> I got a, I got a, I got a bunch of them, but that's what it is, bro. That's what it is. You, you feel me? That's why gangs are killing themselves because there's no such thing as no loyalty. What it is now is, is envy and jealous. Listen, let me tell you something. When my homies got killed on Century, yeah, at the motel, that didn't produce no millionaires. Wasn't no uh, everybody that's involved with these dudes' murders was now suddenly open up shops got shops all on Western, you know, riding around in Benzes and Roses. And didn't none of that happen. You know what happened after the homies died in the motel? The hood vanished. <laughs> People scattered like roaches, were scared to come over there. I can count everybody on their hand that was over there, including myself. I'm number one. I had a off i got a spot over there so i'm over here regardless of all this it's about five homies that's over there every day on a daily basis playing with the killers because they don't have no friends now they they didn't kill they the killers didn't have no friends they didn't have nobody to play with so they had to play with me and other a couple of other homies that were still over here they, they didn't spook everybody. But that's what I have to go through. You feel me? That's what I had to go through. 
everybody's scared. Everybody got a reason. I talk to I talk to people on the phone. I see people in traffic. Like, what's up, homie? Why you ain't been to the hood? Oh, homie, I ain't. Niggas is tripping, man. What you got to do with it? You don't even have nothing to do with it. You don't deal with them. You scared of <laughs> you scared to come to the hood, man. And I told them, I told the killers, I'm like, okay, so let me get my cut. What y'all get? I thought y'all got a million dollars or something. Oh, nobody got nothing. Everybody just sitting around looking stupid. One year later, after the kill, after the killers then killed the homies, what you get? Still ain't got nothing. <laughs> Still got the same car. <laughs> I thought, wait a minute. Oh shit! I thought they own some apartment buildings now. <laughs> no, they ain't got nothing. Nobody gained nothing when my homies died. Nobody gained nothing. But it was a lot of people that plotted in that. They didn't get nothing. I'm like, so what's the what's the point? What 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 I'm still trying to figure out to this day, why did them dudes die? Fake power, power that leads to nothing, power that led nowhere. That's why they died. The power didn't lead nowhere, didn't go nowhere, didn't do nothing. So, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. That's. That's pretty much it. That's why gangs are killing themselves. That's why it's easy. Listen, let me tell you again. It's easier to kill your own homie, rob your own homie, scam your own homie, than it is the next hood, the next gang. Your homie is an easier target because he don't think that he you would do that to him. It's simple. For no reason, neither. This your friend. Y'all been childhood friends since whatever. Y'all got put on the gang together. Y'all been hitting licks before y'all even got put on the game together. Never had a problem then, but now y'all hitting licks while y'all in the game. It's always a problem. It's always something going on because it's other people now involved, you know? So now y'all go hit a lick. You, y'all splitting the money up, y'all doing whatever. Now, homie say, hey man, pass me that woo woo woo. What okay, this no, nah, no, nah, I'm sorry, I get it. As soon as he reached to go get it, guess what? You shoot him in the back of the head. You think he would have reached over you to grab whatever and, and knew that you was gonna shoot him in the back of the head? You didn't play no, but you've been plotting this because you mad because he can maintain himself better than you can. You spend your money faster than him. He get more girls than you. Y'all do the same thing. You jealous of him. The people you hang with in the same gang is jealous of him, and they pumping your head up to say, oh, you should do something to him. He doing this. He doing that. And you go for it. And now you didn't kill your friend. Easy. Just as just easy leave his body in the house vacant house now his family gotta come and we they calling you because you his friend they know you know something oh what's up yeah oh no we was together earlier but guess what somebody always know the sister the brother the cousin they know 
man, this thing got something to do with it. I already could tell. I could tell he got something to do with it. I could tell. The way you acting. Because it comes, you can't hide a murder like that of your own. You can't hide it. Of killing your own unjustly. You cannot hide that. That is something that you cannot live with. You bury it. You push it down in your soul. And you bury it and you try to keep it there. But trust me, it bothers you at night knowing that you killed somebody that was better than you because you was jealous. <laughs> you killed somebody that was more smarter than you because of your ego. <laughs> You kill somebody <laughs> that was more swagged out than you <laughs> because you can't pull the girl and you got money and you still can't pull her. So when you killed your own friend, your own homie, you can't hold that. You can't live. You can't deal with that. You can't hold that, bro. You can't. How you going to deal with that? You can't. You buried it so far in your soul that it's going to mess with you. Guess what? When you get drunk, you're going to say stupid stuff. <laughs> oh, fuck good. I bet you won't do that shit in your mouth. Like, huh? Why'd he say that? Why, why could I say that about the homie? I thought that was his homie. You just implicated yourself. Easy. That's why these dudes, that's why gangs are killing they self. Uh, what's, what is it, one move away? That's why gangs are killing they, killing they own now. Jealousy, ego. I want to be number one. Keep my name out your mouth. <laughs> All that. You feel me? I call them stunt dummies. Hey, man. Here go 1500. Go kill, go shoot, hoost the nut. You know, cuz he ain't no, he'll bust her anyway. Whoa. Well, if he was a buster, why you didn't do it? That's what it is. That's what's going on, man. Come on now, man. We already know what's going on, bro. We already know what's going on. We already know. So that's why you don't want your kids to be in a gang, man. This is why you don't want your kids in a gang, man. Trust me. This is why you don't want your kids in a gang. You don't want, you don't want your kids to to uh to to say um daddy, hey, look, daddy. Oh. Uh, hey, that hey daddy. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm from the hood now, so, uh, <laughs> boy, if you don't knock it off, you know what I'm saying? If you don't, if you don't knock it off, you feel me? West Side Life. Hey, Dr. Crib, my son is 12. What should I tell him now? I see. He is interested in the streets too much. You, you, this is the time. I, you know, I don't know if it, if uh, if you're a male or female or, or whatever though. But if you're a father, this is the time. Don't get angry. Do not get angry. Don't get angry at your kids. Don't do that. Start talking to your kids. Find out what your kids like. Get invested into his interests other than gangs. He don't, gangs, if the streets is taking up his time, he fasted, whatever it is, it's still something else. And start pulling that out of your son. That's what you do. Start pulling that out your son. Start pulling out what he liked, the stuff that he used to like. Whether it be sports, whether it be ever, start doing more father and son stuff with him. Just don't get angry. But when you talk to him, 
be firm and be like, hey, man, listen, I, I don't approve of all that gang shit. I don't I didn't have you to have when I wanted a son. I, I wanted you here on this earth and I didn't have you for you to be in a gang. That's not why I had you. So I'm not going to let you do that. If you're going to pull yourself down, you're going to pull me down with you because I'm going to be there to stop you from being in the game. And you don't have to do it angrily and just talk to him and start dealing with him every day or a little bit more on your schedule. You know, if you're working or whatever it is and you off, you know, start, hey, man, look, man, I, I need you to do something. I, I want you to come over here with me, man. I'm going to pay you. You know, I need your help. You know, start pulling him away, you know, from the game. By all means, you know, and, you know, and more responsibility around the house, you know, more responsibility with school, you know, start talking about the stuff that, you know, because he 12. So he, he, you know, he on his way to high school now. So, you know. Uh, hey, man, look, so you're on your way to high school, man, so you're going to have to start working for your clothes, the stuff that you want to buy. So we need to figure out stuff that you want to do. And being in that gang, man, going up to that park or that's hanging out on that street ain't going to get it, you know? So you got to be a little bit more clever, you know? And anger is not going to get it. Don't be angry. That ain't going to get it. Talking, understanding, and expressing your uh feelings you feel me listen let me read something to you let me read this to you g-a-m-d it says gang addiction mental disorder a term i created that is usually seen seen in black children between the ages of eight to ten years old see 12 on this condition this condition is caused by the attraction of gang life that is usually in a child's atmosphere, community, or household. Once this condition is set in, the only cure or death or at best life in prison. Other conditions could be long-term severe depression, severe drug and alcohol addiction. Once this condition is full-blown, see, it's not full-blown yet at 12, but it's getting there. Once this condition is full blown, the disorder can cause pain and suffering in most families. That's you. This condition can cause irresponsibility, severe ideology, like 18 chains. You feel me? Because that's what all these dudes is on. I got to have 18 chains. <laughs> you feel me? Loss of spiritual awareness. You got to creep all that stuff back in and belief in material idols, you know? That's the Gucci and the Louis and all that stuff, you know? You got to kind of break that stuff. As a man at 54 years old, I only survived gang addiction mental disorder only through the attempted murder I experienced at the hands of my gang, and instantly I was cured. See what I'm saying? But I could have been killed. I feel I have to warn families about this terrible condition that can happen to their children and the only way to prevent it is to have strong, this is what you need, strong role models, family love and support. That means not anger. That means talking and support what you need. Like, hey, man, let's work it out. Like, you feel me? Like, you, you may not be able to break it like that. Like, look, man, you know, I... You try to keep him away as much as possible. So when he go back over there, he be fighting all the time and let that be an issue. You know, some kids don't like that. You know, family, love and support, spiritual awareness and educational and economic values. You know, so you got to you got to you got to bring all that stuff into play, man. You got to bring it all into play so he can he can. Uh, he can, um, you know, know that he got a support system. It's tricky with kids in this age bracket. You ain't, it's not tricking them, but it's kind of like swaying their decisions without them knowing you swaying their decisions and laying stuff out there. 
You feel me? Like making them make, let them make that decision. Like, so what you gonna do? You gonna go really go go to the streets and let them do that, or all you gotta do is do this and that, man. And I'm gonna help you financially. I'm gonna really look out for you. I'm gonna really do this and that. Like, you know, um, because some kids, you know, once they experience that jail, we we you know that that bug, you feel me? It's that bug, because once you get bit by that bug, it's bad, you know? It's real bad, you know? It could be real bad. So um, I hope that you have uh, – let me know. Keep me informed of uh, – keep me informed of uh, what's going on, and uh, let me know, you know, uh, how everything – how how everything how everything is um uh, is going because I want to know you know um just you know make sure that when you start talking to them that it ain't about so you can't scream and yell and all that that ain't gonna get it that's just gonna you gotta talk now 12 is intelligence they you gotta have a conversation you gotta you gotta you 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 gotta hold you gotta you 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 got you got to hold a conversation, and you got to hold a a, a a a real conversation. You can't just hold any kind of conversation. You got to hold a conversation about their future. You got to let them know what's going on. You got especially black kids. We got to get on them. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, you got to let them know um, 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 how how um um life is going to treat them and 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 be real truthful real firm you know and 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 and, you know stay committed in and your beliefs and what you got going you know you know and try to sneak that you know that spiritual awareness in there you know with church groups as you know get them involved in different stuff that's the only way you can combat this gang stuff man you know that's it. You know, you got it. It's a, it's a battle. It's an everyday battle. You know, some kids, my, I love the kids. You ever seen a kid, uh, you ever seen a kid that live in South Central Los Angeles that live in Compton, Watts, <laughs> Long Beach, on a block in the project somewhere that, you know, is riddled with gangs and all that and they mind is like <laughs> i'm not doing that <laughs> they are a trip and i love them type of kids to death because they see and know and like i am not doing that <laughs> hey one of my homie kids not a square or nothing like that though but you know that dude is not finna be no gangbanger you can tell him he is not hard in no type of way he ain't soft neither but ch check this out it's two brothers right one one bro it's i got two homies they brothers they both got sons one is way is wicked <laughs> one is You know, or I ain't gonna say he wicked. I'm gonna just say his attitude. He know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? He more know what's going on and what's happening. And the other one is just like his interest is far from that. You know, straight A student. <laughs> and I, I used to tell the homie like, man, I got to do something with this dude, man. You got to reward kids like that. Because we don't have too many of them, you know what I'm saying? We 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 don't have too many of them. Uh, yeah, thank you, Inglewood Legends. It's all good, man. I'm trying to, bro. You stay blessed too, homie. It's all good. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, but uh, today's show was like that, man. We wanted to bring. I was just letting people know, you know, uh, about. Um, I was talking about my homie hike and it made me think about other people from my hood that tried to be something in life and still got now um the homie um 
Dietrich Dookie from Boys in the Hood with the pacifier. He um he eventually met his death at the street races in Long Beach. The Asians they said that he bumped the Asian car. He bumped the Asian car and he got out and he got into it with the Asian and the Asian killed him. Um, but before that, before that, you know, I, you know, I want to say he was talking to the homie from the hood and, um, you know, unfortunately that happened because we used to be out there all the time and the day in the night that that street race that see that it, 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 people don't understand. The street races, how they doing all these donuts in the street and all that. They used to do that out there in Long Beach, a place that we used to go out there in Long, out there in Long Beach. It was all a big open area for people to do all that dumbass stuff right there, and all the gangs, glow riders, everybody used to be out there, and um, we was going out there all the time. And the one night, the one weekend we didn't go. That's when he came and end up getting killed and when we heard about it we was like damn we wish we would have known you know that he you know but you know life is like that so um but yeah um dietrich gobert um aka dookie and uh poetic justice uh and higher learning the actor he used to be from West Side Rolling Nineties, man. He was. I walked with this dude before. I hung with this dude before. I drunk, smoked weed with him, drunk alcohol, whatever it was that we was doing. Uh, I seen him with nine zero on his jersey, bop mob it down. This is before he was before the NC hat. He never made it to the. Now he died, you know. Maybe he was wearing NC, you know, at a certain time. I never seen no pictures of him with any powder blue or North Carolina gear on, but he was before all that, before the hat, the NC hat came in. And that's what made me think about all that. So basically that's what this show was about. Um, I'm going to have to do hike another time. I'm going to have to get the DVD. I'm going to order it. And, um, uh, then we're going to find out. But thanks to everybody that came through, man, and uh, that uh, dropped some knowledge today. You know you know what it is. No Mo in 24. Uh, it's black progress over here, man. We trying to do something. So if God want to use me as the main crypt to do it, you know, uh, that's what it's going to be. I'm Dr. Crypt, man. And this is where you can come and get some medicine. You know that you need to save a child, uh, you know, or some guidance that you need with somebody in your family that's going through it. You feel me? If you're fifty anything, you shouldn't be. If you're fifty anything, you're supposed to be on over here on this side. If you're forty anything, you're supposed to be on this side over here. This is the side you're supposed to be on. So all y'all that's saying, oh, F you nut, fuck out the crib and all that, you the problem. <laughs> yeah, you are the problem. You're supposed to say, I support what he's talking about. That's what you're supposed to do. So this is Dr. Crib, man. We saying thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow with another show. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about something. It's going to be good, though. Whatever it's going, whatever it is, it's going to be good. I get a lot of calls. People have been telling me to talk about the base, talk about baseball some more in the baseball league. I might do that tomorrow. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Um, but um, thank y'all all for coming through, man, you know, and dropping something. Everybody that came through. Uh, Hound House. Hound House. Uh, nine four radio man, salute, salute, brother Inglewood legends. Uh, the one smoke nine oh, everybody, man, all y'all that came out, I appreciate it, man. 
Because we going this is the station that's going to end gang violence right here. Why? Somebody's going to have to do it, man. So, you know, it's going to have to be a real one, homie. That's, <laughs> let's get that straight right now. It's going to be a real one. Go check the record if you got a problem with it. You know, there ain't no busterism, no snitching, or none of that. This is this is all fact. This all solid real over here, man. It's all good. You know, so um, um, thank y'all all for coming through. It's no more in 24, homie. You know the saying. 18 with a diploma. We challenging all bloods and crips. Don't put nobody else on your hood. They got to be 18 with a diploma. That's the new rule right now. If I catch you, <laughs> hey, it's all good, man. It's Dr. Crib, man. Let's end the sickness, homie. We ending the sickness in 2024.